Welcome back to another episode of the OHL Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Boggs. That guy over there, that's Chris Wiles. And as you can see, we are joined by a couple K-State guys. Now, you might be wondering, how in the world did we get a couple K-State guys on? Well, that's because if you have been paying attention, the college huddle is a real thing. And it's got real tentacles, and it's really powerful. And so all I had to do was send out a message, and these two guys came running on to talk about Will Howard tonight, and they come from the podcast Cocaine Willie. You did not mishear that. Their podcast name is Cocaine Willie. Guys, I got to ask, how in the world did you guys get that name? And I know it has to do with your mascot. Absolutely. Matt, you want to take over or you? I'll, I'll dive no, right in. I want to hear your story, how you describe it, actually. Well, I mean, it's it's a 1970s era Willie the Wildcat. And I mean, he's a famous Wildcat. It's, it's unrecognizable. He's recognizable worldwide, in my opinion. You know, human body, cat head. But in the 70s, there, I don't know what was happening and running through Manhattan at the time. But my God, this guy was atrocious. He was a scary looking dude. We also have, you know, printed logos of him, which where we got the name from is the printed logo, but there is vintage Willie the Wild mascot, Willie the Wildcat mascots floating around there that looks like he, you know, he was dabbling in the, in the powder. (laughs) That was exactly what I expected. (laughs) Chris, should I, should I just let everybody know straight up, this might not be family friendly. Just, I mean, we we're we're already talking with it. Okay. We're already talking about powder. So, I mean, we already got YouTube's attention here, so we might as well go all the way in with it. Awesome. Where can uh, Matt? Where can everybody find uh, your guys' fantastic show? And I, it is, it is fantastic because last time I watched, Matt was wearing a costume for their podcast, which we'll have the same here very soon. Uh, it's more of a Ric Flair style costume, but I digress. Uh, what? Where can everybody find Cocaine Willie at? Yeah, <laughs> the, for podcast, sure. the podcast. The <laughs> podcast. The podcast first off but uh you can find us on uh of course spotify apple podcasts um youtube uh at at cocaine willie um is our handle um there's three of us so obviously you've uh, met chef and then um you mentioned the fireball costume my moniker is fireball matt um as i am i do enjoy uh fireball on occasion or multiple occasions um as we're tailgating um out uh, before our games, but, um, yeah, you can find us on any of those places also on TikTok, um, and Instagram where we do, um, short clips, just talking about K-State sports. And, um, obviously the show that you watched, um, did not talk about K-State sports at all, which sometimes, um, really brings the best out of all of us. So, um, that's where you can find us. Yeah. And the other places go to the, the college huddle.com head on over to the big 12, go down to Kansas K state. And there they are. You'll find their podcast right there. So another great place to find them. All right, guys. So will Howard, I want to, I need to know the truth because we've made a couple videos with some assumptions and there have been some pushback from some K-State fans that say our assumptions are incorrect about the young man. So I want to read to you, read to you guys a comment that was put in the uh, comment section of a video that we did about uh, Will Howard. And it comes from big 12 plus. And he says that um, Will's transfer out of Kansas state was not due to Ohio State, but due to the fact that Avery Johnson was also in the quarterback room and there was a chance that Will Howard wasn't even going to be QB1 for K-State next year. And that one caught me off guard. Is this actually truth? like, Or is this just the fan base saying he's not here so – we're going to make ourselves believe that. Now you have to, you have to understand that Kansas state's fan base. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. And we're going to have a vast opinions, including Columbus, Ohio, right? Chef. (laughs) Absolutely. So you're going to have a, an array of opinions 
on individual players. Just go through the whole gambit as a college football fan, and you will have differing opinions. But th- what Big 12 Plus just told you is my opinion as well. I Ooh, okay. see the thing about Kansas State, and Matt will attest to this as well, Ohio State, Kansas State, we're on two different pedigrees when it comes to recruiting, to developing players, and just our programs in general. So Will Howard came into the Kansas State program as a three-star quarterback out of Downington, Pennsylvania. You know, he was the first quarterback commit for Chris Kleiman, our, our head coach at Kansas State, and he wasn't the most heralded guy. There was quarterbacks that we had recruited prior to him that we missed out on, and he was kind of the third option. If I mean, if if Matt has a different opinion on this, but this is what I'm remembering. This was – he's a – what is he, a seventh-year senior by God? But coming in, he was unheralded. And I'm going to give you the whole story on Will Howard, and, and Matt, you can chime in whenever you feel like it, but – Coming in, he was not the option that we were wanting to play his freshman year, but he got thrown into that situation. His sophomore year was not the option to play, and he got thrown in. Junior year comes along. He thinks he's going to be the option, the number one guy. He's paid his dues. He's played COVID season, no no spring football that co- his freshman year, and he goes in his junior year, and we recruit out of the transfer portal over top of him. A Big Ten guy, Adrian Martinez. I don't know if you guys remember him mm-hmm. at Nebraska. He Nebraska, was there forever. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that was a little unsettling for him. But that year, he was, you know, just like the prior years, he gets thrown into the mix and wins us a Big 12 championship. So his senior year comes along. And it's his time now. He's got the backing of Chris Chris Kleiman. He's been telling everybody in the media for the past, I don't even know how many years, four years, that he's the best backup quarterback in America. Those were That's a direct quote from our head coach. Now it's his time. And we had just recruited the gym, the star, the prodigal son. You know, his hair is flowing gold. He might, he kind of resembles Jesus a little bit. And and he comes in and he's everybody wants him. Everybody wants Avery Johnson to play quarterback. Start. I mean, that's that's what we're hearing. But it's Will Howard's team. The season goes along. He's not, I mean, he's not a hundred percent what we are expected to get. He has some, he has a three interception game. He has people are getting riled up. And statistically, he's having one of the better seasons that Kansas State's ever had. I mean, just just throw just throwing it out there. But we still want Avery Johnson to come in there. He's a true freshman. And in one of the games that, you know, it was questionable whether Will Howard was supposed to be playing full time. They're splitting duties. They're alternating drives. Avery Johnson scores five rushing touchdowns in that game. So the pressure was never off of Will Howard. He never got a fair shake at being the guy. And so the season ends and it's the pressure and it's, it's every, every show. I mean, it's not towards the end of it. I mean, Will Howard finishes the season, but it's every show. Everybody wants him, And it, the writing is kind of on the wall for Will Howard come back to K-State and have a true sophomore, Avery Johnson, who the fans want, or, you know, hit the transfer portal and see what's out there for you. Hmm. Interesting. Matt, do you have a, do you have a something to go along with that? Yeah. Tell me if I'm wrong, Matt. Maybe I'm just remembering (laughs) things, buddy. Um, No, I, Chef is mostly correct. um, As usual, there's always times where he might not be and we have to kind of rein him in, but I, this past season was expected to be Will Howard's kind of coming out party from a starting quarterback perspective. And the fact that the first four games of the season, I mean, he was averaging over 250 yards um, passing, you know, he, it, in the first four games, he had eight touchdown passes. 
there there are so many flashes of what he could provide um, as the starting quarterback, but uh, the tides kind of turned um, on a Friday night game in Stillwater, Oklahoma against Oklahoma State, where he struggled. He had a bad game, and everybody was really pushing for Avery Johnson as a true freshman to come in um, because of a, a couple little mop up duties that Avery had um, early on in the season where he you know, scored a rushing touchdown and, and made a great 15 yard pass. It was like these little flashes of what we are thinking Avery Johnson's going to be post Will Howard, but it was happening so soon. Um, and then the week after Oklahoma State, Will st struggles a little bit in the first quarter at Texas Tech. Avery Johnson comes in and has five rushing touchdowns in that game, and we beat Texas Tech by 17 points. And all of a sudden, the fan base is, who's going to start? You know, it, Are we going to start a true freshman the rest of the season? Are we going to keep with Will? And it, it trended more to keeping will we saw that through the rest of the season until obviously the game at i or the game at home against iowa state where i mean he played really well in a game which i'm sure a lot of people saw because there was six inches of snow on the ground um but throughout the season and this is just a culmination of his time at k-state there's always somebody looking over his shoulder to potentially you know, he's either looking over a starting quarterback shoulder or for this season, he's, you know, looking over his shoulder the entire time. And um, whether that could be considered unfair or not, I mean, that's just the world of being a fan of your university. But um, Avery Johnson, I mean, Avery Johnson's going to be a star in the Big 12 and he's going to be a name that everybody, I, I'll assure you, he's going to be a name that everybody's going to know by the end of 2024 as a sophomore. I mean, he's the best recruit that we've had at Kansas State in a good long while and you know historically we have two stars three stars that come in you know from a recruiting perspective we develop them into stars um, who go on to play in the NFL etc Avery Johnson is the one where these flashes make you think man he could lead this team to the college football playoff that's how good he is so it's it, it could be considered a little unfair to Will for his time at K-State but I I can tell you, and I'm sure you'll ask about it. I'm the biggest fan of Will Howard. I feel like out of all K State fans, I truly am. And and what he, how he's represented our university for four years has been spectacular through the, the difficult times he's had. So I'm excited. I mean, I'm excited to see what he can do for you all. I mean, plain and simple. I I think he could be a, a special. All right, Chris, you get a question ready, but I'm going to do a true or false with you guys because mm -hmm. now I un actually understand it better. Thank you for breaking that down for me, guys. We were so there's a lot to that. And there's still a lot. There's still a lot in yeah, there. there. There's a lot of new nuance there. I get it. Like, I, I understand. Like, you, you know, you. I think you guys broke it down really well. Um, we were sold that Will Howard was deciding between going to the NFL – or sticking around, finding another program to better his NFL stock. Is that true or false? I would I'm gonna say, say undoubtedly true. Yeah, I would say 100% yeah. true. But there's a chance I think so. he stays at K-State to better that stock and then doesn't even get to play is what you're telling me. I I believe I don't think was on yeah, the wall. Ahead. Sorry, I believe the writing was on the wall after the Iowa State game, our last game of the season, that Will was not going to be at K-State anymore. Um, that was – it wasn't blatantly obvious, but after that game, we lost by seven points uh, against Iowa State. He came off the field visibly emotional, and you knew. Dejected. Like, that was his last game and he did not, you know, he does not want to lose his last game playing at K-State. Um, I, I was very certain that he was going to move on somewhere else. Um, I will say this, I, Ohio State was not the school I was thinking at all. Um, I had some thoughts about, you know, he was going to try for the Big Ten and um, not at a, not at a school like Ohio State. 
um, when I was hearing his name at USC, I was like, holy crap, you know? Um, but I, I think it's, I think it's fair to say, at least from our perspective, the true is I believe Will Howard has the capability to make it to the NFL because he has the body for it. I believe he has the talent for it. And we're going to be able to see that with a wide receiver room that I'm not knocking K-State's, but I, I see the Ohio State wide receiver room and there's talent there that's going to, I think, increase Will's capability to not just run an offense, but be a star in an offense. So um, I, I think he's going to be an NFL quarterback. For me, it's, it's, it's very much true. I think the talent is there. The, why I was saying there's nuance and there's more to the situation than, you know, Will Howard not being good enough for the, for the quarterback room at K-State as opposed to what he could be facing if he transferred out or to the NFL is it's not politics, but I think it's kind of the NL, the NIL at Kansas state is not nearly filled as much as it is at Ohio state or, you know, big 10 programs, sec programs. Avery Johnson was a NIL darling. He is a local Wichita kid. He is, he's grown up a Kansas state fan. I think he wore this exact same sweatshirt. Uh, and the pressure to play him, I don't know if, if you've ever heard this rule, but if if they're even, play the young guy. Sure. You, ju you just kind of have to. So Will Howard, we both think Avery Johnson is going to be a superstar. And I think Will Howard, in respect to what Kansas State is, I think he is a superstar. He has the NFL talent. I don't think his arm strength is as nearly as strong as like a CJ Stroud or anybody like that, but he's, he can be very, very accurate. He is, he's an underrated athlete. He is humongous one. He's a humongous human being. Um, he has the, the mental part of the game figured out. It's just at Kansas state, it was just a different direction. And you could tell the way Matt broke it down when he left that game at Iowa state, no one was even thinking about, will howard transferring but or leaving but it just when you saw him leave that field you just knew it was his final game there and i think him going to i think he was a quiet usc commitment for a while um and it was a you know they put their freshman on the biggest stage at their bowl game to see if he was going to have the goods and they just went in a different direction so he's back in the portal and i think ohio state gave him that call after what they saw they put their guy on stage in the bowl game at the Cotton Bowl versus Missouri and said, you know, if we're going to have a competition, this is just from what I what I think I hear and what I saw. You got to get you can't you can't not have a, a, a quarterback room that's full of talent. And if Will Howard floats and he rises to the top, then he's the guy. But if I think it was a, a no lose situation for Ohio State. Now, Will Howard's betting on himself by going to Ohio State. And if he rises to the top, I think he is going to flash because, like Matt said, we had n nowhere near the talent in the wide receiver room as Ohio State. Um, we had a, you know, maybe a first day, first day, second day tight end, an elite offensive line. But when it comes to weapons, you, you're just not going to find very much. Uh, in comparison at K-State as there is to Ohio State. Chris, fire away, man. Hey, guys. So if Will Howard were to win out the starting job, and you guys are saying he definitely has the talent, uh, what do you think is the one thing that is going to most surprise Ohio State fans about Will Howard? I, I think he's got that grit. I think he's got a little bit of dog in him that, you know, from just what you see, just looking at him, he looks like a little cute boy. You know, he's a he's a handsome man, but he's a little baby face. And, you know, he just doesn't look like he's a competitor, but he he can get on you. And he, he's got a little bit of fire in him. 
short yardage. He's not scared to throw his head in there and, you know, go after it. He's tough as nails. I mean, Texas, the Texas game this year, the Missouri game that we played, the exact Missouri team that y'all played in the Cotton Bowl, and I think he was on one leg, and he just, you know, he tried his damnedest to get us back in that game, and if it wasn't for a 62-yard field goal, we win that game. But he, he's he got so much grit, so much toughness, so much dog that, I mean, I think you're going to find a leader. I don't know if, you know, he's a Kansas State guy. He's only been leading this. I don't know him stepping into the Sharks at Ohio State if he's going to be alpha enough to be the leader, but I think he can be, and I think he's got that dog in him that he could be a – a leader and a, you know, a tough son of a gun to, you know, keep it mildly for you guys. <laughs> if, you go to the, keep it family friendly. if you go to the cocaine Willie show, that was not what a uh, uh, chef usually says there. So uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> Matt, what, what's his game like? Explain his game to the Buckeye fans. Like, what are we going to get if he, if he wins, which I don't think you bring him in and pay him the NIL that we supposedly paid him, and he's not starter day one. But sounds like there is a true quarterback competition, and Devin Brown is not letting this thing go lightly, which is a little bit of a surprise to me. But let's let's fast forward a little bit. We get through August. He's QB1. He starts game one. What kind of – what's his game? What is Ohio State? And then – for both of you after that, we've been having this debate. Can you re- – what's his game compared to, say, someone we might know that we've seen play before? Hmm. I'm all over that question. I got you. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Um, Matt, you take the first one. Chef, you take the <laughs> second one. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest surprise is going to be his ability to throw the football. Um, I know – I. I mean, on our side, we're keep, we're keeping up about how things are going with the Ohio State quarterback situation. Um, you know, when he's when he signed, uh, or you know, he he decided to go to Ohio State. Um, we were hearing a lot of things about a, potentially he's a, he's more of a dual threat quarterback. He's a guy that you know can run and throw and all of this type of stuff. And the thing with Will is he's. Like, I mean, as Chef said, he's a physical specimen. He's big. He's a big guy. He has the ability to run, but you're not paying him the NIL money for him to run 15 times a game. Um, I think some of the strengths that we saw him um, this season, or at least in his career, I think he is an excellent zone read quarterback. Um, The ability to read the defense has been one of his biggest strengths. Um, and when he does run in the zone read, he's very smart with it. Um, he has a little burst of speed, but then he lumbers, you know, uh, down the field. Um, but I, I will say this, the biggest piece that you may be surprised about, um, is I believe he just, he throws a really good ball and our wide receivers weren't necessarily in the three or four years that we had him, we had a decent wide receiver room, but it again is not at the level where we have elite route runners and um, you know, we're in that position. We have some guys right now that are, you know, we have a a, a sophomore that was amazing last season working with Will, but he puts a really good touch on the ball and uh, he's improved on that since his freshman year. Um, his freshman year was a little bit of a struggle with that regard. But again, when you have a guy throwing, you know, 250 yards a game, seeing kind of what we've been dealing with in the wide receiver room, you would probably be surprised. Um, and that just takes a little bit of the leadership quality that he has and, um, you know, trying to get his guys to win. And we also had an elite tight end who quite frankly could be the second tight end taken off the board in the NFL draft this season or uh, in a couple weeks. But I, I was I will say this, probably the biggest surprise is going to be he's not a guy that's he's going to be running the football as much as maybe that's been portrayed of what he's done at K-State um, because he's 
he's just not a guy that, you know, you're running quarterback read all the time with him. And um, I, he does, he's not a, a big scramble quarterback. Um, it would be a design run situation. And, and again, he was pretty good with his own read, um, especially with some of the halfbacks that we've had, including Deuce Vaughn. So that that's kind of what I'm picturing for him uh, is he's going to excel in the passing game. Uh, that's, I believe, his biggest strength and, and what you can expect. Chef, you want to take that second one, my man? I want to, you know, I want to go on of what Matt was saying, because sure. when he came in as his, his freshman year, because he didn't have spring, because he didn't have, you know, it was COVID, he was kind of forced in there uh, off of an injury. He was a mobile guy. I mean, he was 40 pounds lighter, but I mean, he was, he was, a you know, he was running all over Texas his freshman year. You know, his sophomore year, he was he was doing what he needed to do. Uh, he had basically run packages his sophomore year. I remember versus Nevada, we brought him in for a whole drive just to run him. Um, minus that was, you know, 20 pounds ago. Uh, his junior year, he gets, like Matt said, that read option. He is so smart when it comes to that read option. He can pull it at the exact – because he doesn't look and he doesn't have that long range speed that people kind of sleep on him and he pulls that ball and he is in the end zone, especially at that, you know, short red zone, 15 yard range. He's getting in that end zone off of a, off of a read off of a pull. You know, he just, he just can do that. But for my comparison to a guy that you guys would know, imagine putting JT Barrett's game in Craig Krenzel's body. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you, I'll let you I'll let simmer. simmer. Oh, God. So this guy's te- – he was he was like, he's 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 JT Barrett. And I was like, no, he's not. And he's I said – JT Barrett with a little bit better arm. And I said, he's Craig Krenzel. And he's like, no, he's not. And you just said he's both. <laughs> he, I'm going to take that as some, a win. No, it's a, it's a definite win. Uh, one's a national championship quarterback, and JT Barrett was – one of the most unheralded, tough, tough nose quarterbacks Ohio State's ever seen. Yeah, he's a fullback um, playing quarterbacks, what he was. And and when you get Will Howard in these situations where he's going to be able to pull off of these edges, he's going to do damage. Mind you, like Matt said, I don't think you're going to run him, you know, 15 times a game. I just, that's just not going to happen. You have two running backs out there. Quinchon Junkins, I think, is – Absolutely amazing. And then you got who's the boy now? Travian Henderson. Travian Henderson. Travian Henderson. Freak athletes. I mean, absolute stud, all American running backs in the same backfield. You're not going to run him. But when teams start leaning into like these dives and these sweeps, you're going to have and he's excellent in the RPO game, Matt. He's excellent. He was he was money for us. If it wasn't for a lot of drops from our wide receivers he would have put up banana numbers. I mean, he puts, he, and that's another thing, Matt. And I know you, you can attest to this as much as anybody. He is not afraid to throw the ball. He, if you give him receivers and you give him the slightest window, he's going to throw it. He is going to, it might, I mean, there's situations where there was three defenders surrounding our tight end. But if you give him a glimpse of a window, he has the arm, enough arm strength and definitely pinpoint accuracy where he's going to get that ball in there on him. And with wide receivers that you guys have, and uh, I think Gee Scott is, you know, he's underrated. But you throw that ball up, he's going to throw it. He's not going to take no sacks. He's not going to do none of that. If, if it's not a, like a free rusher and he's got time, there's no – pity patting the ball, all that stuff. He's going to throw it. He's going to put that baby in there. So he's, he's a, he's a quick decision maker and he's, you know, he's not afraid to, and it sounds like you guys saying he's really good at reading the defense. So pre-snap, pre-snap decision maker. Uh, if the, my first guy's there, where's my second boom go. I mean, it's, that that's, takes, t- that's what he that takes, did. That takes time. Like that's, that's the experience factor uh, that you're explaining to me. And he's played a lot of football. You know, so that, 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 okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Chris, you got another question, my man? Well, yeah. I mean, um, 
as far as what you're saying with his game, his leadership, that all sounds great. You guys said that he was playing behind a pretty elite line. Yeah. At Kansas State. Now, I'm going to be 100% honest. One of our biggest concerns is our offensive line. It was last year. It is this year. Do you feel, A, that he's going to be able to adjust his game should he have to extend plays and be successful in that manner? But also, do you think his decision-making ability is still going to be there if instead of having three, three and a half, four seconds to throw, He's looking at two, two and a half seconds. Matt, you can take you could take this because I, I I honestly have opinions that I'm going to play off of yours because I can remember multiple games that I have in my memory bank. Yeah, always riding on my coattails. Uh, <laughs> I the one thing, at least from a K State perspective, that has been a constant in his time here has been the offensive line. Um, we've had a really great offensive line, at least the past two years, um, which two years ago we won the big 12 championship. And then uh, this season uh, we had uh, a guy, Cooper Beebe, who's going to be a a day two pick um, in the NFL draft um, on the offensive line. So the, the thing that I will always say about Will is I, I believe he's an exceptionally smart quarterback and he has shown through his, through his time, the ability to read, defenses make adjustments um, no matter if we're up against uh, an exceptional uh, defensive line uh, I think the Texas game this past season was an ex- an example of that um, Tavondre sweat is is a guy who's going to be first round second round pick um, mm-hmm. out of Texas uh, he's a interior defensive lineman and our offensive line was getting eaten up that day. Uh, and Tavondre Sweat was having an exceptional game, but Will Howard had the best game, I would say, of his his 2023 season in Austin um, in that game. You know, threw it for 327 yards, four touchdowns, um, went to overtime. I mean, it was it was a great game. Unfortunately, we lost it, but that game I, I believe is a good example of what you're asking. Um, and a defensive line that was really overpowering our offensive line that day, and we were down 17, nothing in the first quarter. Um, we went down there and played like absolute crap the first quarter. And uh, he was able to get us back into it. And and it was uh, the, the wide receivers were, were finding opportunities to get open and he was making the pass. Um, and he was uh, taking some opportunities when that defensive line was, was kind of rolling in on him. He would find a way to scramble out of it or uh, or at least get a little bit of uh, time to be able to make a play, make a pass. So I, I, I think it's a fair, potentially a fair criticism because offensive line, in my opinion, is the most underrated, unheralded position group that's going to bring success to your team. Uh, historically for us, if we have a returning offensive line, this team is winning eight or nine games at least the season. Uh, this for, so for us about this season, we don't know what's going to happen, but I, I, I will say with that game in particular, and he's had a couple of others, uh, he finds ways to win. If, even if we're in a position where he's feeling uncomfortable in the pocket. Piggyback off of Matt again. Look at me doing that. Just like he said, I, that Texas game is the absolute perfect example. And I could think of other ones, the TCU game and the Big 12 championship game. You know, he didn't have a lot of time in those. And we had a superstar running back and, you know, we had some other players that were there to help him. But that Texas game, if you ever have time and you want to see, a, it's a loss for K-State. I don't, you know, K-State fans don't go back and reminisce on that. But if you guys want to see what Will Howard can bring to your team, Go back and watch that entire Texas game versus Kansas State. It's somewhere on the internet. And see the grit because Matt said it perfectly. We were down 17 nothing. We had nothing going. We even tried to bring Avery in in that game, and he got, he got stonewalled. Nothing. We were completely out of sorts. And he threw for basically 300 yards in one half of football. He carried the team. We threw it every play in the second half. I don't think I think we had maybe two rushes. We put the game on his back 
and we came back in that game, got it to overtime, and we just came up a little bit short. Uh, watch that game if you want to see what a quintessential Will Howard game looks like that you can expect at his best, because I think that game really, really showed what it what he could be. And you're going to see some plays out there that weren't made and that went down in his stat sheet as inter an interception, a 75 yard bomb dropped in the bucket, bounced off of our wide receivers face mask into a Texas defender. If it wasn't for that, we, I mean, we might've won that game, but Will Howard is the man. And I've said it amongst our fan bases. I've said it on many podcasts. Uh, we've had a, we've had a good, a, history of quarterbacks at at kansas state and for a kid that's 9 10 11 years old will howard is the best quarterback they've ever seen and in a kansas state uniform and he if he's one of three that have a big 12 championship and that's like you know we don't have any national championships or anything but that is that's an echelon that you in rarefied air in kansas state history so He's done everything at K-State, and what I expect of him at at Ohio State is going to be really no different. This was awesome. Uh, you guys answered every question I had about the young man, um, and, and and you, you talked him up well enough that – I don't know, Chris, how you feel. I feel like – I'm feeling pretty good right now, Eric. I am too. Like I we're we're Devin Brown fans because Devin Brown's a, a media darling here. Like he has got you every bit of grit you guys talk about is yeah. Devin Brown's got it. The thing is he just can't stay healthy. Right. Every time he gets an opportunity, he gets hurt. And his burn the burn the boats mantra is something that we've adopted here at our podcast. Like, so there's there is a small but very vocal group of Buckeye fans who are like Devin Brown all the way. And I, I'm not, I'm not going to say that they, he doesn't deserve it because you know, he's not running away from competition and you love to see that. The thing about it is Will Howard's been through this before. He's had guys overstep him. He's been in the limelight thought, like we said, we, he thought he was going to be the man. He's had it pulling away from him but he's always going to be ready and he ain't quitting. Uh, if he doesn't win the job at Ohio state, it's not like he's going to transfer. Uh, he'll be ready. Um, and he's had guys over re recruit over him, but he's going to put his heart out there. And if he, if he's given an opportunity, I don't think, unfortunately for, you know, Devin Brown, if, if Will Howard steps on that, that field and he gets going, there's no looking back. The, I don't know what you've heard, Chris, but the reports from Saturday's scrimmage that came out of the came came out of uh, uh, the spring news was that that Will Howard looked better than Devin Brown did this last scrimmage. Yeah, and, and I've heard everything I've heard also says that in the actual full contact practices, Will Howard is looking considerably better. I mean, I'm hearing news of the Julian saying. And they're trying to even. Well, look they're that guy saying in there. that he looks better. That, that he's the best looking quarterback in practice. But here's the thing, that may be, but you put that young man in full contact in the Big Ten. Totally they're going to break him in half yeah. right now. Yeah, he looks great seven on seven, but seven on seven is not football. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, let, let him get a year in the body by Mick program, and then he can compete yeah. next year. That's what but I was going to ask you, you that, guys. I was going to ask yeah. you. Um, I've seen him, I've seen some interviews, any Will Howard news, you know, I'm going to go find it. And I think he looks great. Um, he was, uh, his number one goal while he was at Kansas state was to get large and, uh, take the brunt of whatever comes his way as a pocket quarterback. I don't know if he's trimmed down. I don't know what his, you know, his, what he's trying to do. I don't even know what he looks like necessarily, but from, what he looks like in pads. He looks great. So I don't know what he's weighing or anything like that. If you guys can give me an insight on that, I would love to know. Cause he was always a little fluffy, not, not fat, but he was just a big human being uh, at Kansas state. We'll, we'll let you know Saturday because we're going to go see him in person. <laughs> so I'll be watching too. I will say this, Eric, these guys have put my mind at ease. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, if Will Howard starts, uh, starts this season at the uh, number one, I'm calling for 12 and 0. Okay. All right. There you go. 
He's 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 put it to bed. He's gonna go out to Eugene and he's gonna uh, win this game for us. See that's come check, come check the receipts when when if it does happen. Right here. <laughs> Guys, this has been so much fun. If you've enjoyed this, you can expect a lot more of this because of our affiliation with the college huddle. So this is why we do this right here, because you're only going to get this kind of content when you are a part of a community where you could say, hey, you know, the whole the whole point of this was transfer portal, people leave, conferences, teams are leaving. We need to be able to adjust to that as a podcast to offer you our fans and listeners, that same ability to get that content that you want to sink your teeth into. And so I want to thank uh, Matt and Chef for coming on tonight as the representatives of Cocaine Willie and uh, dropping some knowledge on us about Will Howard. I haven't heard any of this on any other Ohio State podcast, Chris. Life is feeling real good right now, Eric. Yeah. Life is feeling real, real good. Guys, where can they, where can everybody find your show at again, guys? You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, all that stuff. Where wherever you can find podcasts, type in Cocaine Willie. We'll be there. We're on Instagram, Twitter. Find us. We we'll talk back. I promise you, we will respond back to you. If you got any questions, anything, uh, the college football huddle, college huddle. I'm ready for it, man. I'm ready yeah. for all of this. Uh, I would be reminiscent if I didn't shout out my boy, Bob Trollsby, who wasn't here, our part of our trio. Shout out yep. to Bob. Love you, brother. Yep. Yep. Look, he's, 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 uh, he's another, another crazy cocaine willy guy. So uh, you want to check out their show. It's a lot of fun guys. I really, I really, I mean that like, you don't have to be a K state fan to go there and have fun. There's a, there's a lot of talented guys and podcasters out there that do exactly that. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I reached out to these guys and said, hop on board, man. So I, I'm so glad we did. Uh, look, I'm looking forward to, to the season. I hope I want to wish you guys good luck this year. Uh, looking forward to learning how the season's going to go in the Big 12. It's a brand new looking Big 12. It's very interesting, that's for sure. Maybe looking we to, can talk to these guys uh, come playooff time, Eric. It, nice I mean, that show? would, yeah, that yeah. would be great. Absolutely, that would be awesome. I know Chef knows how to do this, but we'll see if Matt knows how to do this. Till next time, be kind to one another. I owe someone's OH. Sing Carmen High with all your heart. Till next time, OH. I owe. There we go. <laughs>